Well, I hope you found um, the information we've given you so far useful. What I'd like to do is try to put it in the context of um, the public perception of CCTV and the use of those CCTV cameras in solving crimes. A popular misconception by the public is that the government is watching them and that this is a surveillance society. But the reality is, and um, the um, research statistics do back this up, only a very small proportion of the UK CCTV cameras are actually owned and operated by the government. And in fact, according to the BSIA statistics, publicly owned cameras are outnumbered by privately owned by over 70 to 1. That works out at about one camera per 1,000 head of population. Okay? So, with so few government-owned CCTV cameras in the UK, where does all the CCTV evidence actually come from? Well, the majority of CCTV cameras in the UK are supporting the fight against crime in a way the public may not understand. The private security industry has created a multi-million camera infrastructure which was designed to protect businesses and assets. And just a point to make on the private security industry, don't get that confused with private homeowners with home cease to be systems. Private means private businesses. Yet, when a crime occurs, we know, because the police have told us, if there is a crime, is there any cease to be evidence? It's one of the first questions that the police ask business owners in these circumstances. And in fact, the highest profile cases have been supported through the use of c evidence gathered from privately owned systems. This evidence came from cameras in office buildings, retail establishments, and privately owned shopping centres, which all contributed to solving the worst crimes the UK has ever seen. CCTV systems which were designed to protect private premises and assets captured footage of terrorists and murderers, all by chance. And just to give you some examples, Jamie Bulger case, captured on a privately owned town centre system. Manchester town centre bombing, captured on privately owned systems. London 77, privately owned systems. And in fact, um, in terms of how many privately owned systems there were around um, the location of the bomb, on the bus in particular, we do know that in just a square mile of that vicinity, there were over 16,000 cameras, all owned by private businesses. We know that because the members of the BSIA helped the police to gather the evidence from those systems the police took the hard drives and tapes, and the manufacturers who were part of the BSIA provided hard drives to the business owners so that they weren't without the CCTV systems. Privately owned CCTV systems also helped to prevent the 21-7 reoccurrence. The London riots in 2011, another high profile set of crimes captured on privately owned systems. However, the quality of the images gathered was inconsistent. And that's not because the owners were doing anything wrong. It's not that the owners had set their systems up incorrectly. It's because they weren't actually installed for public surveillance. They were installed to protect private properties. But this could be so much better for the police and the criminal justice system if in future, Systems in the public and private sectors have to be designed and installed to minimum standard. And the minimum standard could include making sure 
that the field of view is properly scoped out, that the cameras are focused, that there's the correct lighting, and that the record quality is to a minimum standard. Just having a look at the role of the private sector in this, the private sector, private security industry, a sector which has self-regulated over the last 30 years. It is under pressure to provide high quality images to the police because high quality evidence leads to the chance of conviction, deterrence and critically the reduction in public costs as a result of a guilty plea. We were told by the police that it costs approximately a million pounds to bring a case to court. If the defendant pleads guilty, that is saving public money. If there are high quality images to support that, there is no doubt whatsoever that the defendant can be identified. They don't want to go to court with that kind of evidence. Now, just on the point of how many cameras are available to the police, just to recap on that point and emphasise, the police actually only have access to one camera per a thousand head of the population. But actually, one camera per ten, if you take the high number of 5.9 million cameras, those cameras are not normally available to the police. But they are so if there is a major crime, because the private owners make those systems available. So moving on to how can the criminal justice system gather higher quality evidence? And we've touched on the Surveillance Camera Code of Practice, pursuant to Section 29 of the Protection of Freedoms Act of 2012. The BSIA and its members support this piece of legislation. And it will go part way to set out the ethos of use of CCTV cameras in public places. But the question is, does it go far enough? owns the majority of cameras in the UK and therefore it could be assumed that it provides the majority of the evidence. But who regulates the quality of private sector CCTV systems and how they are used? Well the BSIA have been at the centre of creating standards and best practice guides for many years. This is as a result of the investment of members and the investment they have made into establishing minimum standards of quality for system design, installation and maintenance. In particular, standards such as BS8495, which is a British standard for the export of evidence from CCTV systems. It sets out how the system should be secured, that they should be only allowed um, to be accessed by authorised people, and that there is an audit trail for the export of that evidence. Moving forward, the BSIA are at the centre of the development of best practice guidelines in the UK, including a code of practice for the design, installation and maintenance of CCTV, right the way through to the export of evidence. These guidelines, which are properly managed, will help to ensure that CCTV systems in the UK will continue to provide high quality evidence in the fight against crime and continue to serve the purpose the owners intended. And as a result of the BSIA CCTV statistics research, the government, businesses and the public will be better placed to understand which sectors are using CCTV and for what purpose. In addition to understanding the outstanding contribution the private industry makes to the criminal, criminal justice system. <laughs>